One of the often confusing things about building an Angular application is understanding what you should put in your constructor and what you should put in the ng on init method, which is your initialization lifetime method. Both of these methods are used for similar purposes. They both only fire once, so knowing what to put where can be a little troublesome. So let's just take a quick minute. We're going to look at what kinds of things you would put in these places and what you should put there and what you shouldn't put there. Now we're going to be looking at some code examples from my Fundamentals of Angular course, which is over on thinkster.io. This is a full introduction to Angular that is absolutely free. It's completely free. You can watch the entire course, 13 hours long, never pay a dime. It includes over 40 hands-on exercises so that you actually learn Angular by building Angular applications, building Angular code. So let's get looking into constructors and the ng on init method. Let's start by looking at the constructor. The constructor is important for two reasons. One, it's a lifecycle method. It fires at the beginning of the life of a instance of a component. And so you can do things in the constructor that you need to do at the beginning of when a component is running. And it's also the place where you inject services. So for example, in this particular component, we're injecting a flop service. Now again, this is some sample code from the course, and in the course we deal a lot with an application called Flopbuster and Flopbox, which are web applications that deal with special kinds of movies, our favorite kinds of movies, those big Hollywood flops. So we've got our flop service, we've also got another service, the activated route service, which I named route. And that's the constructor. It takes care of dealing with the services that we want to have available in a component but it also gives us a place to run some code when the component first gets constructed. Then we've also got the ng on init. Now the ng on init doesn't deal with services, injected services the way that the constructor does, but it is also a lifecycle method like the constructor. So it's a place that we can run code that we want to run after the component's initialized. The big difference between the two is the constructor is really one of the very first things that happens when the component is created. And the initialization method happens a little bit later on after the component has been initialized. Now there's a lot to describing what that means that the component has been initialized, but really you should just think of it as Angular is done getting the component ready and making it be a real component. So the template's there, the services are ready, everything's ready, and this is really now an Angular component and you could do all the Angular things. So by learning just this much, this already gives us a lot of clues as to what kinds of code we should put where. But before we look at that, let's talk about the kinds of code that we would put into either our constructor or our ng on init method. This would be code like initializing our internal state properties, loading data that the component needs, which usually happens from an HTTP call, calling some initial methods on injected services or its own internal methods, and then starting up processes or calculations that need to be run at the beginning of the life of a component. Those are the kinds of code that we would do. So let's look at the constructor first and talk about what kinds of code we want to put into the constructor and what kinds of code are safe. Because the constructor happens before the component's really a full-fledged Angular component, the type of code that's safe to put here is mostly things like state initialization. For example, if we wanted to default our previous flop ID property, which you see up above, we could give it its initial value here and set it equal to say zero. Of course, we've got to call it this.previousFlopID. So this is the type of code that we could put here in the constructor. Although in a case of something like this, it's really better to just initialize it for a static value like this, really where it's declared. So here we would initialize it better like this and not initialize it like this. One reason we might want to initialize a state variable like this is if that initial value actually comes from an injected service. So up on line 12, where we have and declare our properties, we don't have our services, but in the constructor, we do have the services. And that's the typical kinds of code that you want to call in the constructor. So a good rule of thumb here is it should be very simple code, it should be very easy to read, and it should happen really quickly. It shouldn't take very much time at all. Calling asynchronous code from the constructor is not usually done. The ng on init method, on the other hand, is typically the place where you want to call the real startup code, the things that you need. So for example, gathering data. You can see here on line 21, I'm calling this dot get flop. 
that's going to ultimately make an HTTP call, which is going to get the data for the current flop so that we can display the details of that movie. And that's a typical kind of thing that you would do in your initialization method. Calling asynchronous code, no big deal. Even doing some heavy calculations that might take a short amount of time. Again, that's okay to do as well. The ng on init method is the place where we want to do that type of stuff. The stuff that really should happen at the beginning of the life of a component. Now, since the code that we put in the constructor is so simple, and we would do most of the stuff in the ng on init, and even the simple code that we sometimes could put in the constructor, we really can do outside of the constructor, like initializing these state variables. It's really just a good rule of thumb to consider any code in the constructor to be a bit of a code smell. Something that you look at and say, hey, does this code really belong here, or should it be somewhere else? For example, even initializing a variable to a static value or a value from a service can be done in the ng on init method, usually fairly safely. Rarely do we need them before the initialization method actually happens. So the ex code example that we saw before where we initialize this previous flop ID, if we were going to actually do this in code, it's still okay to do this here in the ng on init method. That's still fine. It's just as good as doing it in the constructor. Of course, doing it in line on line 12 is better, but if we wanted to say, grab it from some internal service, For example, something like this, that's okay to do in the initialization method in this ng on init method. That's actually okay. So minimizing the code in the constructor, putting most of the startup code into the ng on init, that's the typical thing that you're going to see. As you get deeper into Angular and understand more and more about the lifecycle methods and when they actually fire, you can start to be a little bit more complex about what you're doing. But just be careful because somebody else who comes along to maintain your code who doesn't understand all those nuances might not understand why you're doing code somewhere else. So if nothing else, follow the default pattern, putting your startup code into the ng on init. Now before we end, I just want to talk about one gotcha with the ng on init that happens really frequently. And that is when we are using the same component to display different pieces of data based on what the route is. So if the same component services multiple routes, usually because we're viewing the details of something, that's a place where we can get into the gotcha. And the gotcha is that the ng on init method is only going to fire once, no matter how many times we change the route. If we change the route, but we're still using the same component to display that route, the ng on init method is not going to fire a second time. So let's look at an example of that. This particular page that I've got here is actually doing that. Let's go into one of these movies, these flops, and we're looking at the details. And notice that I've got sort of this next arrow and this previous arrow over here. And if I click the next arrow, then I'm going to see a different movie. And if I click the previous arrow, I'll go back to the previous one. Let's look at the console here and see what's happening. I'm going to refresh this page so you can see I've got a message that gets logged out when it's constructing and initializing. So the component has been constructed and initialized. And now I'm going to go to the next movie and I'm going to change the route. Let's go up here and just look at the route and you can see it's slash flops slash zero. And I'm going to click that next button. And now the URL is slash flops slash one. We're displaying different data. But notice that we didn't construct and initialize the component again. It only got it constructed and initialized once. So I've actually got to use RxJS and listen to when the route parameters change in order to change the data that's being displayed. I can't rely on the ng on init method getting called multiple times. So that's what you'll actually see here in this get flop method is that we're doing a subscription to the route parameters. If you're not familiar with this type of code, that's okay. That's not really the point of this. It's just to understand that there is this kind of gotcha. If you do want to learn more about this, definitely go and check out my free course over on thinkster.io. There's a link down below. And I hope you learned a lot from this video.